This is part three of the tutorial on the material editor. I'm running UDK version 12-2010. My name is Jadua Ross. I'm in cohort 15 at the Guildhall, and today's date is 1-24-2011. So the exercise that we'll be doing today is creating a cell shader that's customizable so that we can give our environments that hand-drawn look. There's a number of different things that you can change in the material instance editor including the, an ambient color, a diffuse color, the number of color levels, the color of the outline, and so forth. So to do this, we're going to also be creating a custom lighting model. So to get started, we're going to create a new material. And I'm going to put it this in the Tune package. And put it in the Materials group. And I'm just going to call it Tune Mat. Okay, so here we are in the material editor. The first thing that you're going to want to do is go down and change this to this lighting model to MLM custom because we'll be using our own lighting model. And then I'm going to want to move way to the right. This is a pretty complicated and advanced texture, so we're going to need a lot of room. The next thing I'm going to do is drag in a, a texture coordinates expression and then a scalar parameter and uh, then we'll drag in a multiply and what this is going to do is allow us to tile the our material across the surface by a amount that we enter so parameter uh, the default value is going to be one just once across and once up and i'm going to call it uv tiling I'm going to connect up the inputs. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is drag in two texture sample parameter 2D expressions. And then um, these are going to be the normal maps for whatever we are going to be cell shading. So I'm going to call this one normal text. And the other one I'm going to call, this will be the outline normal text. And for the textures, I am going to use the default material. Um, engine material normal which is located in engine materials it's called default normal so I'm going to select that and then I'm going to go back and hit the green arrow to use that it should pop up there and pop up there and I'm going to connect the multiply for the UV tiling to my UVs I'm going to move these over just a bit Kind of keep everything grouped tightly. There we go. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is the diffuse. So the first thing I'm going to want is a light vector. I'm going to put this down here a little bit. And then I'm going to want a dot product expression. And then I'm going to hook up the light vector to the A and then the RGB out of the normal text parameter to the B. All right. So what this is doing is calculating the impact of the light on the normal map. But I want to make sure I don't have any unexpected values. So I'm going to want a clamp to keep them, uh, the values between the range of 0 and 1, which is the default value on this constant clamp I'm connecting up here. Some people like to use a regular clamp and use their own constant, ex constant expressions, but I prefer the constant clamp because it keeps things less cluttered. The next thing I'm going to want is to add a, a diffuse color to the map. So I'm going to want um, a vector parameter expression. 
and I'm gonna call it diffuse color and I'm gonna set its default value to 1 so it's gonna be red you could do it green or blue it, it doesn't really matter you're gonna be changing it anyway um, went inside of the material instance editor then I'm gonna want to multiply I'm going to connect the RGB to the A of the multiply and the clamp to the B. And that makes our diffuse. Next, I'm going to do the specular color uh, and highlights. Uh, this is not actually strictly necessary. Uh, you can do uh, some, some cell shading scenes you may or may not want this, but I'd rather have it in there and have you not need it than have you need it and not have it. So. I'm going to drag in a light vector and a reflection vector and then um, I'm going to do a dot product of those and then I'm going to clamp, connect it up and clamp it uh, as before with the um, comp constant clamp with default values of 0 and 1. But then I'm also going to want to uh, calculate the impact of it on the actual normal. So I'm going to want another dot product and I'm going to connect up the A there and then I'm going to connect up the RGB of the normal to the B and then uh, another constant clamp of course keep those values in expected ranges. But since this is a uh, customizable interface, I want to be able to control the sharpness or uh, tightness of my specular highlights. So to do that, I'm going to drag in a scalar expression, uh, scalar parameter, there we go. So this is going to be my, uh, I'm going to have a default value of 25, and this will be my spec power. and then um, I will then actually do the power part of it which is raising this uh, clamped value to the base and having the spec power as the exponent. Next thing I'm going to do is I want to add some color to that uh, spec so to do that I'm going to need a vector parameter And this one I'm going to have at 0.8. And then I will add it with a multiply. So I'll connect the power to the A, the RGB output of the parameter to the B. And oops, I forgot to name it. Uh, this will be spec color. Right, and then just one more thing, which is I want to add the uh, diffuse with the spec. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to move these over just a little bit here. up a little more room for the cell shading portion. So uh, in this portion we'll actually do the cell shading. So the first thing I want to do is drag in a scalar parameter that's going to be the number of color levels that I'm, I'm going to have. Default's going to be three and we'll call this color levels. So essentially what I'm going to be doing is multiplying the image by the um, number of colors that I want and then doing a floor expression and then um, dividing it back down and this is going to um, limit me to the number of colors it'll just kind of round to the number of colors that I want 